Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to do more limits at infinity and notice that these here have a bunch of exponential functions within them. So notice we got this e to the power of x, e to the power of 2x. We got some e to the negative exponents, negative 2x here, negative 2x. So how do we deal with limits at infinity with exponential functions? Now, one thing I want to make a note of before we get into these limits is because we're dealing with e to the x a lot, is how the graph of e to the x looks like. And e to the x basically looks like this, right? A regular exponential function. So the limit as x approaches positive infinity of e to the x, what are the y values approaching? They're approaching positive infinity. Then the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x, the uh, y values are approaching what? They're approaching zero. There's a horizontal asymptote on that left side. And we're going to be using these two results here for this, uh, this question or uh, these limits. So I thought I would mention that initially. So starting with number one, we got the limit as x approaches infinity of 3 times e to the x minus 4 all over 5 plus 2 e to the x. And like we did when the numerator and denominator had polynomial functions, what you want to do is divide everything by e to the highest exponent in the denominator. So notice the denominator, the highest exponent is this x here. So what we're going to do so we're going to multiply this entire expression in the denominator by 1 over e to the x. What we do to the bottom, we got to do to the top as well. So we're going to take this whole expression, this whole thing that we were given, and multiply it by 1 over e to the x divided by 1 over e to the x, which is like multiplying it by 1. So basically everything, uh, let's write this limit out everything is going to get divided by e to the x in this case. So we're going to have 3 e to the x divided by e to the x minus 4 over e to the x all over 5 over e to the x plus 2 over or a 2 e to the x over e to the x like that. Then we could simplify this further. Notice how these e to the x's will cancel out, so we'll just be left with a 3 minus 4 over e to the x, all over 5 over e to the x, plus, notice these cancel out, 2. That's just a 2 left there. Yeah. Okay, so now notice that we could plug in this infinity value. Notice that 4 over e to the x, now as x approaches infinity, we know that this is going to approach what? Infinity. This whole thing is going to approach infinity as x approaches infinity, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And so what's 4 over a very large number infinity going to be? It's going to be 0. So this whole thing is going to approach 0. Same thing here. e to the x, as x approaches infinity, it's going to approach the whole thing infinity, so 5 over infinity, that would give us 0, so we'll end up having 3 over 2. And that will be the limit, the answer to number 1. Right? So 3 over 2 is the answer to number 1. Now what about number 2? Notice that number 2, it's, uh, it's actually really similar to number 1. The only difference is that instead of e to the x here, this 2 e to the x, we got 2 e to the 2x. Okay, so notice that this exponent, 2x, is higher than this exponent, x. So same process, is just now we got to divide everything by e to the 2x instead of this e to the x. Okay, now what if there was like 5 e to the x over here? Then we'd still be dividing by e to the 2x because it's the highest exponent. Right? There's only a 5 here though. So everything's going to get divided by e to the 2x. So we'll have 3 e to the x over e to the 2x minus 4 over e to the 2x 
all over 5 over e to the 2x plus 2 e to the 2x over e to the 2x. So divided everything, I keep forgetting to write this, the limit as x approaches infinity. So everything got divided by e to the 2x, right? So let's uh, simplify this. Notice that these will cancel out. And uh, notice that this here, what's e to the x over e to the 2x? Notice they're not the same thing. They have the same base, so we could subtract the exponents, but we would end up with e to the negative x, right? x minus 2x is negative x, which is the same as 1 over e to the x. So this here, this expression, this 3 is going to be there, but we're going to still be left with an e to the x at the bottom. Um, and then we'll have minus 4 e to the 2x all over... 5 over e to the 2x plus 2. And now notice, as x approaches infinity, this here is going to go to 0. e to the 2 times infinity is going to be a very large number as well. So a number over a very large number over infinity is going to go to 0. Same thing here. So we're going to end up with 0 minus 0, which is just 0, over 0 plus 2. So 0 over 2, which would give us 0. So that's the answer to number 2. So this difference here, instead of having e to the x, we now have e to the 2x. This whole limit now is going to approach 0. And that makes sense because over here, you can think of this 3e e to the x and 2e e to the x. They're sort of approaching infinity at the same rate. Um, it's just there's a coefficient in front 3, coefficient of 2. So these kind of like almost cancel out, you could think of it. But if you look at these two expressions, the ones that are going to be dominant as x goes towards infinity, notice the 5 and the negative 4, those won't matter as much. Notice that this here, because we're multiplying the exponent by 2, e to the 2 times infinity is increasing a lot quicker than just e to the infinity as x gets larger. So that means the denominator is going to increase a lot quicker than the numerator. So we're going to have a smaller number over a much larger number, which means that it's going to go towards 0. Right? So that's the answer to um, number 2. It's equal to 0. Then we got number three, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 3e e to the x minus 4 all over 5 plus 2e e to the x. Notice that this limit here is the exact same as this one up here, but what's the difference? Well, instead of approaching positive infinity, we're now approaching negative infinity. And actually, we don't have to do any more work here because we know the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x, that's going to be 0. Remember, there's that horizontal asymptote on the left side? So as x goes towards negative infinity, this e to the x is going to go towards 0, and then this e to the x is going to go towards 0. So that means 3 e to the x, 3 times 0, 0. 2 times 0, 0. So we'll have 0 minus 4 all over 5 plus 0. Right, 0 minus 4 over 5 plus 0, which gives us negative 4 over 5. So this one we didn't even have to do any work on. And that's because x was approaching negative infinity and e to the x approaches 0 as x approaches negative infinity. That's why I wanted to distinguish between that positive infinity and negative infinity at the beginning. So this here ends up being the answer for number Three. And then finally, we got number four over here. We got the limit as x approaches infinity of 2e to the x minus 3e to the negative 2x all over 3e to the 2x minus 2e to the negative 2x. So notice we have some negative exponents now to deal with. So a couple of ways to do this. Now, to review exponent laws, if I have a negative exponent, if I have a base to a negative exponent, that's the same as that same base 
to a positive exponent, but we brought the exponent down. So we could apply that same rule here. So notice we'll have 2e to the 2x minus 3 over e to the 2x. Right? This e to the negative 2x we just brought down to the denominator. All over 3e to the 2x minus 2 over e to the 2x. This e to the negative 2x we brought down as well. Now let's forget about these for now. What are these going to approach here as x goes towards infinity? Well, notice that this whole thing is going to go towards positive infinity, and then we'll have 3 over infinity. So notice that this is going to go towards 0, and then this is going to go towards 0 as well. A number over infinity, a number over infinity. Right? Those are going to go towards 0 for sure, so what we're going to end up uh, having is uh, this function going towards 2e to the 2x over 3 e to the 2x. And notice that those e to the 2x's would cancel out. And so we would be left with 2 over 3. So that's one way to show it, not the smoothest way. Another thing you can do is what we did before is divide everything by e to the highest exponent in the denominator. And what's the highest exponent? We got 2x and we got negative 2x. So 2x is higher than negative 2x. So what we can do is, um, is divide everything by e to the 2x. So watch this. So we got limit as x goes to infinity. So we got 2e to the 2x over e to the 2x minus 3e to the negative 2x over e to the 2x all over 3e to the 2x over e to the 2x minus 2e to the negative 2x over e to the 2x, like that. Okay, so if we simplify these, notice these here cancel out, these here cancel out, but what's going to happen with the other ones? So notice we'll end up having 2 minus uh, this 3 here stays, but how is e to the negative 2x over e to the 2x going to simplify? Because notice they're not the same thing. They can't just cancel out. So if we do it on the side, notice we have the same base. So we can subtract the exponents. We could take this, subtract that, which would give us e to the negative 4x, which is like 1 over e to the 4x, like that. Right? So this e to the negative 2x over e to the 2x simplifies to 1 over e to the 4x. So here we'd be left with 3 over e to the 4x. All over, here we're left with a 3, right? Because these e to the 2x is canceled out, minus 2. And then again, e to the negative 2x over e to the 2x simplifies to e to the 4x. And now as x goes to infinity, notice e to the 4x is going to go towards infinity. So 3 over infinity, that would go to 0, that would go to 0, and we're left with 2 over 3, which is the exact same answer that I got the first way. But again, I would probably do it this way. It just uh, shows your work a little bit more. The other way, we kind of like worked with only one part of the function and then worked with the... Uh, First we worked with that part and then we worked with the next part. It was just kind of weird. Um, I feel like it's better to do it this way where we're dividing by e to the highest exponent in the denominator like we've been doing. And the final answer you get is 2 over 3.